All right, you know the drill. Let's start the loft and start the heat and set our loft. At this point, nothing's going on in Artisan Scope, and I'm doing a pound of Guatemalan. Uh, so it usually takes me with a pound just a second to figure out where I want the heat to start the row. Sometimes you have to come back and uh, set the heat again right after, uh, set the loft again right after you uh, give it heat, as it sort of just changes the, what's available electrically. Uh, so we're good to go now. So you'll see me hit the start button in Artisan Scope. And you'll see me hit that right about now. And then I'm going to hit the charge button. The charge button tells the Artisan Scope PID to start. In the far left-hand corner near the 100, you're going to see the temperature of the beans right around 70 there. And you'll see that begin. And you'll also see it approaching the set value curve, the curve going from the left to the right. The PID does not start until the bean temperature reaches the set value curve. Now, you can watch the burner slider on the left, or you can actually watch the uh, servo on the far right-hand corner, far bottom right-hand corner. And right about now, you can see it moving. You can see the burner slider going up and down, and you can see the servo moving. And I made a little extra black mark there so that uh, you can kind of get a little better uh, you know, key in on what the servo is doing. So what's happening now is the bean temperature has crossed the set value curve and the PID is figuring out the best solution based on the PID settings, which I'm happy to give you for my roaster, a uh, good place to start, it's figuring out how to get it to the set value curve. And early on, it doesn't reach the set value curve sometimes. Maybe it's a few degrees off and that's not a big deal. So you can see the PID go to work. And while it's doing that, I want to, have you take note of certain things on the screen. Obviously in the far right hand corner from clock, clockwise here, far right hand corner you can actually see the servo and you can see the servo itself moving uh, and I've got that zoomed in for you. If you go right above that you can obviously see the control panel of the roaster. You can see my new enhanced roaster uh, loft knob and you'll see every time that I interact with the roaster. And then in the far left-hand side, let's all go all the way to the far left-hand side of the screen, you see the burner slider. And the burner slider is reflecting what Artisan Scope is telling the servo to do. Uh, from the, let's see, you'll see a couple of the curves that are in the background. Those are called uh, background curves. They are sort of grayed out. Uh, the one that moves from the left to the right and sloping upward you can see the temperature markers up there on the right. That is your target curve or the SV curve or set value curve. That's a curve that you create with the Artisan uh, Scope tool yourself. And while you're creating that curve, it automatically creates your rate of rise curve. And that is the curve that is downward sloping and starts around 350 degrees there and goes all the way down into around 13 minutes. And that curve doesn't really have a bearing on temperature. That is more of a bearing on the temperature applied to the beans and the bean temperature that's happening in real time versus the heat that's being applied. And then the, in the far bottom, you'll notice a green oscillating curve. That green oscillating curve is a graphed representation of what the artisan scope PID is telling the servo to do. And that runs from 0 to 100. So you'll notice throughout the roast as it gives the beans more and more heat, you'll see that green oscillation begin to rise. So right now we're about three minutes into the roast and you're seeing uh, the, the bean temperature curve uh, reaching closer and closer towards the set value curve. And you can see the dotted line estimator and what is actually happening with Artisan Scope as it is figuring out the solution to keep it on the set value curve, close to the set value curve, but not overshoot the curve. And that is really important. At this point, we'll use a little bit of magic of TV time, and I'm going to speed it up and bring us closer to uh, first crack, and then I'll talk to you through first crack so you can see how that goes, and you can see how the Stellar Beans Roaster Automation Kit works how you can have incredible control and repeatable control over your profiles and maybe even make your roast a little more drama free. You can really see the PID going to work on getting it up to the set value curve and you can see it being very tender and uh, deliberate about not overshooting the curve. 
And here in just a minute, you're going to see it sort of join the curve, and it stays with the curve uh, very, very tightly at that point, which is impressive with any pit control, because pit is a little bit of black magic. And I think the uh, Artisan Scope pit does a great job once it's tuned of figuring out where you need to be. Look at that. We're right on the curve now, super tight, right before first crack, and that's right where you want to be, and it's following it so well. All right, first crack is getting close. In this case, first crack is at 410 degrees, and as soon as we reach a bean temperature of 410, you'll notice me tap first crack start in artisan scope and bam there we go it's marked nine minutes and 14 seconds 410.3 degrees and at this point i am waiting for first crack to end and where i'm going to pull the beans i like these beans right before second crack they've got a great balance of the roast and the origin character and the roast character my wife likes that with this particular bean too so at this point i am uh, waiting uh, waiting for uh, that temperature to be reached and let me comment on this set value curve this curve is a curve that you create I created this curve to hit first crack around nine minutes so you think about all the different beans that you have and maybe some beans like a little bit more time before first crack or sometimes beans maybe want a little more roasting and not reaching second crack so fast. You want a little bit more time between first and second crack. You get to create whatever curve you want and force the beans to follow that curve. Now first crack is close to ending now. I can sort of hear the beans slowing down. Sometimes I mark it, sometimes I don't. I thought for the video, what the heck, I'll mark it. But this is an incredible tool. You can see the PID is continuing to keep right on the line, maybe just a degree or two above and it's doing a great job of bringing me wire right where I want to be. Right about this point is where first crack ends. And I'm watching the temperature, I'm sort of adding maybe 10 degrees, so I'm looking to like the mid 440s um, before I go ahead and drop the beans. And when I am ready to drop the beans, I just tap drop, and the beans will coast just a little bit. I'll tap drop and I have Artisan Scope programmed to turn the heat off. In the bottom right hand corner you will notice that it resets the uh, the PID back to zero, resets the servo back to zero. So the heat is off, I turn Artisan off, uh, the beans are still tumbling in the hopper right now, and you'll see me over at the control panel walk over and flip the lid up and then pick the, uh, the hopper up and pour it out. And you can still see that the uh, servo is in the off position and uh, we'll put the hopper right back on the roaster and turn the roaster off, uh, or turn the heat off, and then turn the loft uh, uh, knob up so that uh, the roaster can cool itself down and the roast is done. And that is how this kit works. Uh, it is really easy to use, it's smooth, and you can pick whatever curve you want for whatever beam you have. And I think that's pretty incredible. Thanks for taking the time.